Hey, what's going on, guys? Sam Crowley. Welcome back. Welcome back. Looks like we solved the issue of the whole, uh, you know, cutting in and out stuff. Let me just make sure we are. Let me just get inside the group here. Go click on that. How's everything showing up? Beautiful, beautiful. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Sweet, 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 sweet. A couple of people want to join the group. Let me okay that real quick. Hold on one second. Uh, bah, bah, bah. All right, cool. Hey, what's going on? Um, now, let me just make sure I do a quick check here. Type yes, comment, how you doing, what's up? You can hear me, you can see me. Just give me some sort of uh, feedback that your boy's doing good. All right, hey, good. All right, Carl, good. Looking good on your end. That's sweet. All right. Hey guys, well, welcome to the Daily Splash. It's Sam Crowley. It is uh, Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. And I want to talk about, what I just talked about on my podcast and we talked about a little bit yesterday. Oh, by the way, let me know if this works. We figured out the uh, problem with the tech issues yesterday. Okay, all right, that's kind of awesome. I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Hey, um, fear of failure. Let's talk about it. You know, it's a real deal. You know, the fear of failure is a real deal, especially for people that don't want to get started. You know, they don't want to get started because they really don't feel like, hey, what's going on, Beth? What's going on, Judy? Hey, Carl, Kim. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Fear of failure. People don't get started because they're like, I don't understand this part. I don't understand. I'm afraid I'm going to, you know, it's going to sound bad. It's going to look bad. Get over it get over here's the thing all right you're putting the focus on you you're not putting the focus on the individual who actually wants to hear your content you know what i'm talking about and let me ask you a question may i ask you a question today okay that question is oh by the way i even screwed up the uh launch with sam it's launch with sam.com by the way uh let me, can i even edit that let me try to figure that out too maybe we shouldn't be doing it on the fly like that okay um, I'm accidentally going to hit finish and end the webinar. Um, oh, I can see the comment. Hey, what's going on, Art? Great to see you, buddy. Great to see you. Um, just give me one second here. Yeah. Uh, cancel. Text overlay. Oh, man. You see, I tried to get tricky. It's launchwithsam.com if you want to work together one-on-one. -on -one. Son of a gun. Isn't that something? It. Oh, here it is. Here it is, boys and girls. Here it is. Dot. Come, there it is. Perfect. Save. Beautiful. All right. So we talked about it yesterday. The fear of failure. Get over it. May I ask you a question, real quick? Have you? Did you help anybody yesterday, today, last week, last month? Did you help anybody do anything? Of course you did. You're helping people every single day figure out something. Now here's the problem, though. Here's the problem. We start getting up here. And we think, well, that's not that big of a deal. I can't really get paid to do that. Of course you can. I'm on YouTube all the time, guys. Remember I tell you, I'm self-taught. So are you. All right. And if you're not self-taught, you should be self-taught because everything is figure outable. Everything is figure outable. You know what I mean? Like you could go on YouTube or even Facebook right here. You saw me yesterday flub the dub, tried to start the Facebook Live three different times, was, was as confused as a kitty in a lightning storm, you know, all over the place, couldn't figure it out. No big deal. We figured it out today. Downloaded a piece of software called Ecamm Live, E-C-A-M-M -M Live, $9 a month. You kidding me? 15 a month, whatever it is. Now we're cooking with gas, baby. Now we got the Daily Splash working. Everything is figure outable. All right, but you got to get out of your head thinking, well, you know, nobody wants to learn how to fill in the blank. What have you been telling yourself that nobody wants to learn how to do? Nobody wants to learn how to cook. Nobody wants to learn how to paint. Nobody wants to learn how to mow a lawn. Nobody wants to learn how to do WordPress. Nobody wants to learn how to use a video camera. Everybody knows how to use their phone. I'm coaching a guy, my man, Ron Jones. He might even be on here. If you're, hey, Ron, if you're on here, give me a shout out. I don't even know if he's in here. Ron's a personal coaching client. Uh, network news anchor in Atlanta, Georgia. All right, network news anchor in Atlanta. Ooh, great guy. He came to Cincinnati. You probably heard him on my podcast. I interviewed him last October, somewhere in there. He came to Cincinnati. We created his entire coaching program and built his entire funnel. And, you know, Ron's a guy who's teaching people how to, he shoots video. The network new, top 10 market, okay, top 10 market in the country is Atlanta, Georgia for television. So he's the, uh, the network news guy. And he teaches people how to shoot video on his phone using this. This is how he does his daily 
uh, like man on the street video interviews with people chasing down stories. He uses an iPhone 7, I think. Imagine that. Top 10 market in the country, and he's out there doing the news using an iPhone 7. Does that not blow your mind? You know, give it a give me a lot of love on that one, man. Double heart the thing, like it, whatever you got to do. If you think that, that somebody's going to build a seven-figure platform and he's out there teaching people how to use their phone to shoot video. Basic editing, guys. Basic editing. You know, if you don't know how to edit right now using video, for example, like what we're doing right here, that's no excuse not to share your message. That's no excuse. I mean, you can learn all of this stuff. But here's the problem, okay? You're like, well, it's going to take me a long time to learn. Oh, I know. I know. But based on what? Based on what? It's going to take you a long time based on what? Like, the time's going to pass anyway. Before you know it, it's going to be August, okay? And we're in a pandemic economy right now, all right? So the pandemic economy is everybody is consuming digital content, all right? You're consuming digital content right here, all right? You're watching the Facebook Live. And so if you're consuming the digital content and you're smart and you're successful, and yes, you are successful, don't go down that road telling yourself you're not. Success is not measured by the dollars in your bank account. Can I get an amen on that? A double tap, a heart, a like, whatever it is, an emoji. Uh, can I get somebody to clap for anything? <laughs> when my wife heard me use that, she saw that I had access to sound effects she left the room because everybody, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a kid in a candy store now. By the way, can you hear the applause? I hope you can. That's the, like, that's probably the best part of, not the best part, but that's going to be one of the best parts of the, all of these daily splashes of the sound effects, you know? Hey, Angie Chelly, just saw you out there. Howard Valentine, great to see you. Um, don't think for a minute that dollar signs and decimal points define what your success is that's not it guys that's not what it is okay success is your ability to provide for your family okay long term be there adding value okay long term none of this is short term anybody can be an overnight success anybody can catch lightning in a bottle yeah anybody can do that it's like Hey, I sold 100 grand last month. Great, that's awesome. Congratulations. I mean, I don't know, A, how much money it cost you to sell 100 grand. Maybe you'd spent 90,000 on Facebook ads, you know? B, I don't know how much of that you actually kept, you know? After taxes, did you pay affiliates and all that stuff? You know what's funny? Anybody that does a product launch, if they say they did a million, you could they probably made about 200 grand, 250,000. They didn't make a million. They paid affiliates, they paid software, they did all that stuff. I'm not poo-pooing a million dollar launch. I'm just saying there's always something more to the numbers, okay? And when people start defining success based on the dollars they're making and not the value that they're adding, they're, they're, on a, they're on a slippery slope, usually to failure, because think about how fast money can come and go out of your life. And it can come in just as fast as it goes out. That's what a lot of people don't realize. If you think you can burn through money fast, doesn't it make sense that you can also accumulate it as well? But if you're relying on that for your level of satisfaction, you're, you're, really, you're really playing on some thin ice there, man, because then all you need to do to be happy is to check your bank account online and if it says a certain number, then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, awesome. But if it doesn't make a certain, if it doesn't read a certain amount, then all of a sudden you're depressed because you're adding, oh, I'm a failure. You're not, man. You're one connection away from exploding your business, you know? Uh, Marius, love it, man. Been following you for a few years now. My kids, Mario and Alex, even recognize you before you said your name. Keep it up. Keep it real. Keep motivating people. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hey, thanks for uh, following, too, the Everyday Saturday Movement. I love it. I love it. By the way, I'm, this is how I monetize my business. So if you see the link in there, launchwithsam.com, I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. And what I do is I really help them define what their message is and what their zone of genius is. So then they can go out and monetize it. And I mentioned Ron Jones, you know, the guy that I was using as an example a few minutes ago. Ron had no idea that this message he had inside of him, we created it called Stories That We Tell. And who would, who would think that a man who spent the better part of probably 30 years in news didn't know that he had the gift of being able to tell a story, you know? And sometimes the most obvious thing is right in front of our face, but we don't see it because you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. Does that make sense? It's difficult to see the picture when you're in the frame. And you need other people to help you see that picture. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you guys see the picture of the value that you're bringing. So go back to what we were talking about earlier, for example. 
What do you help people do? What do you help somebody? Somebody just type in there. Hopefully, I can see it in the comments. And if I don't, I'll, I'll answer. But what, do, what have you helped somebody do in the last week or two or the last month? Did you encourage somebody? Did you drop off a meal? You know? Did you send a quick email to somebody? You know, things like that. Those should not, that's how I started in the whole podcasting business is somebody told me, you know, you got a real gift for encouragement, which is funny because I'm, I've always been the most pessimistic person out there. I never really viewed myself, but I really did think, you know, I, I do. I do get people motivated. That's the one thing I can do, and it's because I don't take myself seriously. It's not like I'm out there thinking I'm Tony Robbins on, you know, on stage. It's not like, I'm, oh my God, I'm, I'm the next Messiah that's going to save somebody. So I don't look at that that way, okay? And I look at it like I keep it very simple. I get people from point A to point B. Point A is I don't know what my message is and I don't have any idea how I could monetize this simple thing. And point B is now I've got the message, I've got the vehicle to monetizing it, you know? Art helps somebody get their real estate license. That's great. You know how many real, I, it's funny, Art, I don't know if I told you or anybody else, I was sitting for the real estate exam a month ago. I took all the, t I got all the, uh, I went through Hondros College, okay? Andros here in Cincinnati. It's probably all over Columbus. I took 120 hours of real estate classes online in 10 days. Completed all of them. Passed them all. Appraisal, law, licensing, all that. I'm getting ready to sit for the exam. March, uh, my live event in Vegas was March 13th, Friday, March 13th. Uh, I went and met with the local realtor here. And the reason I'm sitting for the exam, I have a buddy of mine, Billy Donovan, and he and I go way back. He and his wife are crushing it with real estate. He's like, dude, you've got... I'll, I'll feed you all the leads because I love, love, love real estate. I love it. I always have. I've been an investor. And I would love showing Mr. and Mrs. McGillicuddy their home. To, I'd love to sell a $200,000 house or a $2 million. I'm just fascinated by real estate. Always have been. And I can certainly do it while I do all this as well. So anyway, uh, if I'm getting bombarded with emails, Art, about you know now that I've got my license, every realtor is messaging me to come on board. I, I get on somebody's list, I guess, once you do it. But if you help people prepare or understand how to get a real estate license very monetizable that's that's an e-course and don't get caught up guys when you hear the word courses and memberships and things like that you don't got to go buy an expensive software you just got to put some videos together put them on youtube on a private playlist and send somebody the link and then have them paypal you 20 bucks or 100 bucks whatever that looks like we make it so complicated you know why we put all these barriers in front of us a lot of the times is because we don't want to actually do the very thing it is that we want to do. You know, we don't want to go through the steps. We're trying to put another, well, I got to get a domain name first. Well, I got to get an LLC set up. Well, I've got to get this piece of software. Oh, you know what I got to do? I got to watch that webinar for the 70th time because I think I missed something. Instead of just getting going and plowing through it, you know, like we did yesterday. I went, I did Facebook Live three times yesterday. By the way, I got allergies, I think. So if I keep itching my nose, I apologize. Before we ever got it right. And then I just did it in portrait mode. It looked stupid, but we had a good time. And now we're doing the daily splash every day. We'll put some logos out there. You know, we'll put a banner and we'll get it all gussied up for people that get excited about that stuff. But right now, in its rawest form, you guys are here for the, ver for the second one ever. Ever. I'm using this to build my community to a massive level every day of Saturday to get people to understand that their best days have, haven't even happened yet. And I monetize it by that link right there, launchwithsam.com. So when people finally say, you know what, I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. I'm drawing my flag. I'm planting my flag in the ground. I'm going to do it. Then they're going to contact me and we're going to work together. You can do the exact same thing. Okay. If you're a coach, consultant, or anything like that, you know, it's the... We are in this pandemic economy right now on April 28th, and that's not a bad word. Pandemic and economy, it sounds like, well, we're in a... No, 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 no. That, we're in a digital, consuming, off-the-chart economy. That's what I think, you know? We are consuming digital content like crazy. And the faster you can put your intellectual property out there to be consumed via video, audio, or written, the faster you're going to realize your way to your very own Saturday, whatever that looks like. And here's the one thing you shouldn't let stand in the way. You shouldn't let technical stuff get in the way. Because there was a time 20 years ago, 30 years ago, guys that were in my space and women as well, Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, Dennis Waitley, people like that, monetized their messaging without the internet. So it's possible. I mean, they were sending out cassette tapes. And if you don't know what cassette tapes are, then you're way too young to be on this Facebook Live. Um, they were sending out direct mail and flyers and things like that. 
They were having live events with 10,000 people without an email list. How did it happen? They figured out what their message was, and then they found individuals who were interested in hearing that, and it was as simple as that. I mean, it's not any more complicated. Caesar said, I recently helped an occupational therapist with her YouTube channel to help other occupational therapists. I mean, that's obviously huge. Being able to help people with YouTube or Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and all of that social media, if you have a gift in any of that, you're going to be able to monetize that. But it doesn't just need to be that. Everything is figure outable, guys. All right. Saying you don't have the information is not an option. You already have the information's out there. It's out there. You already know it's out there. It's not a lack of abundance that we have. It's the limitation that we put on our minds that stops really that abundance from showing up in our lives. You know? Does that make sense? So let me take a quick sip of water here. How, how's everybody doing? So far, so good. Y'all still with me? Did you fall asleep? Did you leave the room? You out mowing the lawn and just left the Facebook Live going? What's going on? Coming and going. Everybody's coming and going. What do we got? I figured out how many people here. We got 13 people right now. It looks like 14 now. 15 now. Awesome. Okay, cool. Leave a comment. Uh, a lot of the comments as well, because I asked individuals, uh, let me hit this. Uh... God, I love that. I love it. Um, just got off a conference call. Hey, it's Dean Paul from Kansas. What's going on, Dean? Great to see you, buddy. Angie's feeling really good. I'll see you at 3 o'clock Eastern time in a couple of hours, Angie. Great to see you. Chopping veggies for breakfast. That's awesome. Loving the message. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate that. Uh, a lot of people also responded by they want to see content on how to podcast, which is great. I'll, I can share my screen as well. Um, podcasting, obviously, is something I've been doing for a long, long time. You can do it as well. Very low barrier to entry. All you, know, all you need is a, a phone or you can use... I've got this microphone here. This is a snowball, blue snowball that I'm using for this webinar. Uh, all of it, super easy. So if you want to learn to podcast, stay tuned. I'll be doing some of that inside the group as well. <laughs> I feel like your wife. I would have left the room. I know she did. I am a kid. I'm a 50-year-old, almost 52-year-old kid. I mean, give me a toy. I'll play with it all day long, man. And, that, and, and oh, by the way, it's, uh, it's when I have an aha moment. So a lot of sound effects, guys. Let's get back to the main point. All right. You don't need sound effects. You don't need video, you know, at a high level yet. All you got to do is have a little bit of confidence that you can help somebody. And you've got your message dialed in a little bit, just a little bit. Because here's what happens. When you go down the road a little bit further, a little bit further, the message gets tighter. And it doesn't. you don't need to be a speaker or a coach. You just need to be able to convey what that pain point is that to the person who wants to work with you. You know? So that's it. It's not any more complicated than that. We make it complicated because we think, well, no, it's got to be, it's got to be, if I'm going to make 100 grand or if I'm going to make 500 grand or I'm going to make even five grand a month, I mean, wouldn't an extra two to three grand a month change your life? You know, I know it would with me if somebody said, hey, I'll, for the rest of your life, I'm going to give you two to three grand extra every month. I'm like, oh my God, seriously, with a kid in college and two kids in high school and a five year old? Oh my God, absolutely. Bring it on. Well, if that's going to change your life, why complicate it? An extra two grand a month is 500 a week, you know? 500 a week is 250 bucks before Wednesday and 250 bucks before Sunday. Take Sunday off and get back to work on Monday, you know? And if it's 250 bucks before Wednesday, that's like 100 bucks or less Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know? That's $67, you know? How about that? College dropout doing some math on the fly. That is actually pretty impressive. That gets a ding. Think about it, guys. Don't make it any more complicated than it is. You know, forget making, you know, oh, I got to make 10 grand a month. No, you need to make five grand before the 15th. Okay. You need to make 2,500 before the seventh or the eighth. All right. You need to make 1250 before the third or the fourth. When you break it down and you chunk it down, it doesn't seem that big of a deal. And then it adds up. And if you have a good week or a better week than you thought you were going to have, then that obviously takes a little bit of pressure off coming into the next week. But you can't do any of that stuff until you get crystal clear on what it is that this solution is at its basic form. I mean, at, you'll be able to solve bigger problems. And when you solve bigger problems, you get paid bigger dollars. But at its basic form, stop procrastinating because this thing has to be a certain way. You don't even know how it should be. There's no, there's no blueprint. Like, and you know, there's no, I, I don't even know what, every time I thought when I launched something, it never looked the way it, it was going to look. Does that even make any sense? Every time I thought 
when I went to launch something, it never looked how I thought it was going to look. It just never did. But I didn't think that was a failure. It was very super successful. Some of them were an absolute flop. And you know the ones I made the most money and learned the most were the ones that were an absolute flop. You know? Mailman's here. You can hear my border collies barking. I don't know. But every time that you go to do something, you're going to procrastinate because you think it's supposed to look a certain way. It's never going to look that way, guys. It's never going to look the way you think. You draw it up on paper. You can draw it up. You know, I got friends that do business plans, super smart men and women, really smart. But they'll spend six months doing a business plan, a pro forma, so they can have a, something to plan. And here I am just crashing into stuff, you know, just knocking stuff over, figuring out how to make something work. And I'm out the door in, in 10 days launching a new thing. And they're sitting there working on numbers to make sure that they can get it, it tight. And you know what happens when they go to launch the thing? It never looks like the numbers anyway, you know, especially in the pandemic economy when people are consuming digital content. If you're, if you're waiting around to try to make this thing fit a certain way, people are already consuming somebody else's content that was kind of okay, but it got them going, you know? I mean, the perfect plan that never gets launched is worth absolutely zero. And even when it does get launched, it's never perfect. Purchase is a completely subjective term. It's going to keep you paralyzed from ever getting going. And there's a lot of baggage that comes up in your past and what people have said to you and all of that. I get it. I get it. Me too. Me too. But, I, you know, at one point, I said to myself, okay, so everybody out there who knows me is going to judge me because I used to be this kind of negative guy, drank a lot, always hit happy. I still get that glass of wine. By the way, I don't know about you guys, man, but that $9 wine consumption, shh. So watch out, man. I am an aficionado of $9 wines. This is what the pandemic has done for me. And I may even launch a $9 wine website, just strictly $9 wines, okay? But if you're worried about being judged, uh, you have already lost. You've already lost. They're going to judge you anyway. They still judge me. I get messages from people back I've known 30 years ago. What is this new thing that you're doing? New? What are you doing in 15 years? What, are you talking? what is this motiv what are you, motivational speaker? By the way, I don't even like that term. It doesn't even define what I do or who I am. I'll take it. All right. Been called worse, you know. But I don't, you can't let other people come into your life, define who you are, and try to sabotage your success, and then you never get going because, oh, yeah, I knew them. You know, I, I, I ran into an individual at an event last year who, hey, Robert, thank your number one Kenyan fan. You fire me up, brother. You make me want to fly. Well, holy crap, that's like a testimonial. I'm going to have to screenshot that one and use it on my website. Welcome from Kenya, Robert. Great to see you, buddy. I ran into an individual, true story, last year at an event who came up to me and said, you know, you gave me a lot of confidence to get going. Can I share with you why I've never done a Facebook Live? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I thought, I thought I heard them all. She didn't start doing Facebook Lives because of what she thought her ex-boyfriend's family would think about her. Think about that. Didn't start doing Facebook Lives because she was concerned about what her ex-boyfriend's brothers and sisters and parents would say about her behind her back if they even found, even if they ever even saw, found out that she was doing these. And I believed it. I'm like, oh yeah, I've, yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, look, I've been there as well. I mean, I wish, I wish I could have gone back and done things differently when I first quit my job, but I was worried about, you know, tiptoeing around this, around that, and, you know, offending somebody and all that good stuff. You guys want to hear a funny story? Can I share a funny story with you? When it, when I quit my job in 2005, I went back and then I started to be really becoming kind of this internet guru. I really got, uh, really infatuated with search engine optimization, SEO, and I'm re-engaging in that, by the way, now. So now, also, on top of building funnels and doing the agency work, I'm doing SEO work again, which I, I actually like doing only for people that I like working with. That's kind of the difference. I don't go to the store hungry now. I used to take any job from anybody. But in 2007, you know, it, I was starting to find my way out the door because I just, I was selling yellow pages, okay, yellow page advertising. That's what I spent 15 years doing. And I was managing, running a 90, $90 million uh, operation here for Cincinnati Bell Yellow Pages. And then I, you know, ended up running the, you know, it was internet and yellow pages and all that stuff. But I didn't have any interest in selling yellow pages. I mean, I, I honestly didn't have any interest in selling yellow pages in 2002, let alone 2007. And 
the people that were managing now, because I wasn't a manager anymore. Remember, I was just a sales rep. And I'm like, this sucks. I'm not selling yellow pages. It doesn't even work. Nobody's opening up a phone book. Imagine, imagine trying to have a battle with somebody in 20, 27, 2007, trying to explain to them that the future is actually online. It's not in yellow pages. And them coming back to you saying, no, no, you can't sell any more internet. You've sold too much. You need to focus on yellow pages. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say to that. That's when I got extremely frustrated, belligerent practically, and I quit again without any safety net this time. Then I just was like, I, you can't ever go back that after you burnt the bridge that badly. But imagine trying to explain to somebody in 2007 that yellow pages were starting to get phased out and the internet was really where it was at. And them telling you, no, 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 it's got to be yellow pages. We got a quota to make and it's got... I'm like, oh, and I hear these stories from individuals who are still in jobs that they absolutely hate. And my response is always, you don't have to quit like I did. I mean, I wouldn't recommend anybody quit a job unless you're just so fed up with it and you can't take it anymore. And it's really eating at you and it's causing you not to even be the person that you want. Then it's time to kind of pull the trigger. But you always got to understand, you know. That first impulse, let it pass. Wake up the next day, the next week. Is it still there? And if it's still there, months and weeks and years like it was for me, I first wanted to quit in 2000. I had an interview one time with a real estate company. I was going to be a real estate agent in 1999. I remember I went to lunch, and I wish I would have pulled the trigger then, but I didn't. And then the feeling went. It came back 2000, 2002, 2004. I finally was like, this is terrible. I'm not even seeing my family. Now I got three kids in 2005 under the age of five. I got to be a dad, you know? So that first impulse, don't quit your job right away. Think about it, okay? Think, well, you know, I'm still going to pay the bills. I'll launch my movement and get this message. You get 168 hours in the week, right? There's 168 hours in the week. And if you got 168 hours in the week, even if you're working eight hours a day, eight times five is 40. That's 128 hours still left, you know? Let's say you're sleeping, that's another 40. Now you got, what, 68 hours left. There's a lot of time to learn, guys. There is a lot of time to learn how to really, even if you only did it three hours a day, which everybody's like, I don't have three hours a day. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I'm, I promise you, if I followed you around, I would find an extra three hours a day. An hour in the morning, you could wake up. An hour at lunch, you can learn. And an hour at night, yeah, absolutely. You've got way more than three, but we can start there. You know what that is after 90 days? That's 270 hours of learning. You know how dangerous you would be spending 270 hours in just nine, just 90 days, just 90 days. If you really, fo and I mean focus, turn the phone off, Facebook, all that stuff. Can you imagine with, let's round it up to 300 hours focusing on one specific task of zeroing in on your message and then how to monetize that? Guys, you would be making money hand over, well, I'll say hand over fist because that's a, I, I, you'd be making money. Whatever that looks like. You've seen the testimonials like Luke Medeus, 27,000 in his first 30 days of even having a coaching program we worked together. You see me post in the group with Steven who messaged me on Instagram. He sold $3,000 on a Friday night in November, sends me an Instagram. Dude, I copied your exact thing. I do a podcast. I've only had 40 episodes and I launched a coaching program and I just got $3,000. I'm like, it's amazing. They started with absolutely nothing. Nothing except... They want to share stuff. You know, Luke wants to share how to wholesale real estate. Stephen wants to share, I think, personal development. I don't even know. All I know is they have a big heart, and eventually they're going to have a big wallet, and they're going to have a big bank account. I don't know what that looks like for them. Maybe it's an extra, like I said, maybe it's an extra two to 3000 a month. Maybe it's an extra $20,000 a month. I don't know, you know? But I know one thing, you're never going to fail. You know, because if you just keep dialed in on, on what success looks like for you, you're never going to have a bad day because you're always going to be fulfilled. And a lot of people go to a job, they're making 100 grand a year, they're just not fulfilled. And that's probably you. If you're on this right now and you have a job, you're probably not fulfilled. That's why you're inside our group, which is fine. It's an okay place to be temporarily, but it's not an okay place to be long term because you're really, you're, you're really robbing people around you of the blessing of having you hitting at a high level. You know what I mean? Yeah, Luke is a great guy. You met him at our event in Vegas. Yep. Art, I had the head of marketing say to me, Internet's a fad. Isn't that awesome? I think people still believe the Internet's a fad. I mean, I think there's people still out there that think that. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. I just want to encourage you guys, okay? If you want to work together one-on-one, -on -one, I actually have a couple of coaching clients on this call. Angie's a coaching client of mine and a few others, I think, of Kim. I know we've worked together as well. Um, you can connect with them. 
anytime. Shoot him a message. Hey, what's it like to work with Sam? Should I work with Sam? You know, what's it like? Guys, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an open book. There's two things I know how to do. Create an amazing message and create an amazing movement. If that interests you, get on my calendar, launchwithsam.com. All right, let's work together and I'll show you exactly how to put all this together. It's like turning chess into checkers. All right, we're going to be back tomorrow, same time. What about this, man? Our, our Facebook Live work today. <laughs> awesome. Leave a comment. If I can help you, you guys know how to get a hold of me. Go to launchwithsam.com. We'll be back here tomorrow for the Daily Splash. Tell all your friends about it. Shout it from the rooftops. Get inside this group to motivate, inspire, empower people uh, to make any everyday Saturday. Dean Paul, anyone can PM me as well after working with you. Dean's a great guy, man. Uh, Really cool dude. Really cool dude. All right. Hey, guys. Yeah, the sound effects are working. That's awesome. That's really what I wanted to make sure, that the sound effects are working. All right, you guys have an amazing rest of your day. I'll see you back here tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific, all right, for the Daily Splash. Have the best day ever. We'll see you.